the greatest mysteries of all time is none other than time itself. Augustine of Hippo once said, I know what time is until someone asks me what it is, then I don't know what it is. We do understand time as our invented system for keeping track of the day and year. The confusion about time arises when contemplating it as a structure of the universe, a fourth dimension. Evidence of it being so is mathematical evidence and the sensation we experience of its existence, namely time passing. Mathematics in itself is inconclusive, and even though since Einstein's formula or physical reality has been coined space-time, it still hasn't ticked all the boxes of scientific research, such as experimentation. In addition, the sensation we experience of its passing isn't familiar to any of our five senses, and as reality can be defined as the world as we experience it through our senses, this line of evidence is highly questionable. You may be familiar with the expression, if you hear something enough, you'll start to believe it, even if it isn't true. In psychology, this is referred to as the illusion of truth. It's a result of cognitive ease, which makes us more creative and intuitive, but it can also make us more gullible. It's actually what aids in the spread of propaganda. With time being the most used now in the dictionary, this psychology definitely factors in blurring the lines of our material reality causing us to perceive an intellectual structure as a literal one. According to exactlywhatistime.com, time is something we deal with every day and something everyone thinks they understand. However, a compact and robust definition of time has proven to be remarkably tricky and elusive. We're now going to consider a definition of time from the Oxford Dictionary and see the labelling power of the word time at work. It isn't exclusively the labelling power of the word that's responsible for the confusion, but rather a combination of factors, as will be explained throughout. Time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present and future, regarded as a whole. With the progress of existence and events being causality, this definition is saying that time is tantamount to causal progression as though another dimension is required for the progress of existence. This is what's known as the fourth dimension. The first three to accommodate the three-dimensional unfolding of events and the fourth to accommodate existence's progress into the future. Why though is another dimension required for the progress of existence when causality by nature is progressive, cause and effect? Despite the progressive nature of events, this progression isn't following any direction. They do unfold three-dimensionally, but from the start of an event to its conclusion, it follows a logical order, but not any dimensional direction. Take numbers, for example. The logical order of numbers, say 1 to 24, like the hours in a day, is perceived as going forward, but they could also be described as going up. That's two directions to describe the same process, because literally, there is no direction, just an increase. It's the same with events. They follow a logical order, but not any line of any dimension. Their progress is just an increase of activity. Past, present and future are things that have happened, are happening and going to happen. It could be argued that yesterday, today and tomorrow proves there is an actual past, present and future of time, but they are just a repeated cycle of Earth's axis rotation, a numerical increase. From the birth of our universe to the present day, what appears as a linear progression of time is just an accumulative effect, which, as already mentioned, has no direction, with the estimated 13.8 billion years being merely its measurement, just a dimensionless system of counting. Basically, the progress of existence and events is due to a flow of energy, not a flow of time. The reason we see time as tantamount to events is likely due to the nature of events. You see, unlike space and objects which are relatively static, events are full of motion and change, and the system for measuring them is also constantly changing, 
from seconds to minutes to hours. But these units of time that elapse during events are only units of an invented system, which thousands of years ago would have been merely the movement of a shadow cast by a stick in the ground as the day progressed. Thousands of years on, the device may be more sophisticated, but the time that elapses is still the same, just the time of the day. This brings us to another reason for the abstract view of time, and that's the accepted view that clocks are representative of time as it flows from the fourth dimension. Science Daily magazine refers to this union when talking about the mysterious nature of time passing. It states, we follow it with clocks and calendars. We just cannot say exactly what happens when time passes. Even the theory of time dilation was claimed to be realized as fact because the clock said so. This is a gross misconception. How can clocks and calendars be in sync with the mysterious undiscovered fabric? What clocks are synchronized to is a planet's rotation around its axis as calendars are to its revolution of the sun. Converting degrees of these events into seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months. These rotations cause the day and year to pass at 24 hours and 365 days, respectively. And as we did with causal progression, we put the time label on them, and days and years passing became time passing. This might seem like an oversimplification, but if you think about it, the axis rotation is consistent with illusions such as sunrise and sunset, and a striking similarity between the illusions of time passing and the moving sun is, the latter does act as nature's hour hand. And don't the seasonal changes that result from Earth's orbit of the sun also impress upon us the sensation of time passing? The labelling power of the word time and the misguided correlation between both clocks, calendars and the still undiscovered time dimension are clearly demonstrated when you contrast the rest of the world's experience with the Amazonian tribe called the Amandawa. They understand events and sequencing of events, but don't have a notion of time as something events occur in. They don't have clocks or calendars and don't even have a word for time in their language. It appears where there's an absence of the human inventions, time doesn't exist. These Amazonians live in a timeless world because of a timeless world. What's happened is we harnessed our planet's rotations for keeping track of the day and year and called this system time. And since then, we've actually been living on a clock that's in a calendar. And the effect of this has caused us to believe that time is real.